This episode is brought to you by Levitt Pavilion. If you somehow haven't made it to a show at Levitt, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's my favorite place to watch live music outside in Denver, bar none. And it's the spot for free, all ages concerts in beautiful Ruby Hill Park, which is just 10 minutes from downtown. The next free show is Heartless Bastards on August 4th, but there's a ton of great acts coming through. Like on August 10th, Levitt is hosting the All My Relations Celebration, which is a festival showcasing indigenous art from different tribes and diverse genres. You can see Levitt Pavilion's whole summer lineup and get your tickets at levittdenver.org. That's L-E-V-I-T-T, denver.org. Today on CityCast Denver. What is a hot dog? Is it liquefied animal parts wrapped in carbs and sugar? Or is it something more, something special? And just asking for a friend, is a hot dog a sandwich? We've had a lot of big hot dog questions on our minds this summer. So we called up an expert and hit the road for an epic and fairly explicit Denver hot dog adventure. And you're invited. Today is Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. I'm here with Pay Denver newsletter editor Peyton Garcia. Hi, Pay. Hey, Bree. So we did something real wild recently. Um, we'd been talking about hot dogs, like where to get the best ones. And um, I happened to get a hold of Denver's biggest hot dog celebrity for sure, Biker Jim. Um, pay for anyone out there who isn't familiar with Biker Jim, who is the man, the myth, the legend? So he is the guy behind Biker Jim's gourmet hot dogs on Larimer Street. Biker Jim is a household name. People know him. He is the hot dog guy. So he had a cart in 2005, and then that eventually, you know, he was just selling it off of the street corner that multiplied into three carts. And then by 2011, he opened his brick and mortar. And it has been gangbusters ever since, because every time we go in there, it is like it's pat. There's always a line. I don't think there's never not a line. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to Biker Jim, he said that he hadn't really surveyed the competition for a while. So I was like, OK, let's do it. So you and me and producer Olivia Jewell Love met up one morning recently and Biker Jim showed up, how else, on his signature hog. Biker Jim, welcome to CityCast Denver. Thank you so much. I've been excited to come join you and go eat some wieners. Were you surprised about that at all, Pay? Like when we, when we met up with Biker Jim, he shows up on a Harley. Yeah, I guess we should add. <laughs> so he's known for his hot dogs, but he's also known as like this just real badass guy who rides around on a super loud Harley and he's got his flowing silver hair pulled back in a ponytail. I love it. I mean, that's that's what we were hoping for. If he would have showed up in a minivan, <laughs> as Olivia said, we would have called him Minivan James. <laughs> you don't get a name like Biker Jim from being someone who just is ordinary in high school. Maybe he No, I just made himself. that up because Jim, the guy that lives in the suburbs, gourmet dogs, just didn't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay, Peyton, tell me about our first stop at Chicago Style Beef and Dogs. What was yeah. that place like? So this place is over, um, it's off Colfax in Lakewood, right? That's Lakewood, because it's right across the street from Casa Bonita. So yep. it probably does not get the spotlight very often since it's right across from the Pink Palace. I had never heard of this place, um, but we went in and it is basically Chicago in a tiny little shop. Um, the walls are plastered with Chicago paraphernalia, um, posters, and I don't know, sports banners. and <laughs> I loved it. Chicago everything. I've never been to Chicago, but now I feel like I have. So we went here, uh, obviously, because uh, I, I think this is actually, this was Jim's recommendation because he was like, you kind of got to start with the legit, the, the OG, the, the most famous style hot dog in America for sure, which is the Chicago dog. Mm -hmm. Hey, what is a Chicago dog? I, I knew that Chicago was known for its hot dogs. I didn't realize everything that went into a Chicago style hot dog. So it's served on a poppy seed bun. Um, it's an all, it's made with all beef all Vienna beef, which is like the beef of Chicago, I guess. Um, and it's topped with yellow mustard, 
chopped white onion, tomato slices, a full dill pickle spear, sport peppers, celery salt, and neon green sweet relish. <laughs> you know, that is one of the mysteries of uh, Chicago land hot dogs. Ah. Um, it is it is something that perhaps one of your listeners can uh, can, de- can define figure because out for us. I'm not positive why, why I know it is color? this neon relish color, but I don't know why. It's a lot. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, we're also like starting to get a feel for Biker Jim because we're sitting down in this restaurant. We're hanging out with him. What was your sense of like Denver's king of hot dogs? I had obviously I had heard of him. I, as a lot of listeners know, I spent some time in the food writing world. So I went to a lot of different like food events and, and Biker Jim was obviously at a lot of those too. And I swear to God, this guy always had like a crowd of people around him and there was always <laughs> a lot of laughter. Um, so he just always seemed like a really cool guy, but I didn't really know what to expect. But he's hilarious. He's yeah. really funny. Like, I wasn't sure if the dynamics were going to be weird right. with us being like three women because we had Olivia and with a biker us. dude. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, but he was he was great. So I have an important question regarding the composition of what we're about to eat. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I believe it is. It is often meat between bread. You know, a bun is bread. So yeah, is a hamburger a sandwich? I'm also going to go, yes it is. I've actually seen hot dog sandwich or hamburger sandwiches. And I'm actually, you know, the first time I met my ex-wife, she was eating a hot dog sandwich, which basically two beef dogs sliced in half on white bread. With, <laughs> That's when you, you knew? Were like, That's when you knew? No, she had a big scar across her throat and I have a scar fetish, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also, I just loved his, like you said, his storytelling was so good. And he really, to me, he had this vibe, like, I have, like, really cool uncles that, like, showed me cool art and always tell funny jokes. And, like, Biker Jim had that cool uncle vibe. Like, he's the guy that rides into town on his Harley and you know he's going to have a good story for you. He's probably going to show you something your parents aren't going to show you. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? He had some, like, kind (laughs) of raunchy jokes and stuff. But I have to say, like, again, for being three women hanging out with a biker dude, it was, like, never directed at us. It was, like, we were all in on the joke and we were all having a good time. And, like you said, he's, like, a he's a good, Biker Jim's a good hang. Yeah, just all around a fun hang. So I like that when you ordered your hot dog, you said drag it through the garden. Is that hot dog lingo for everything on it? Um, in Chicago, it is. Um, you know, I mean, so a true to life Chicago dog is this, but notice how you ordered yours without X and X mm-hmm. and X. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want one drug through the garden, you want the whole shebang. Okay. You know, you want everything they've got. Well, and and these hot dogs became the Chicago dog became really famous basically during the depression because cheap Mm -hmm. and all in all it's a relatively balanced meal here you know you got carp you got starches the the, the relish may have been a little less you know manufactured back in those days sure you know but But I can see what you're saying the depression era usage of all things Mm -hmm. right yeah Um, and they taste good Hey, it's Bree. Because you're listening to this show, I know you love and want to know all the ins and outs of what's going on in Denver. But that doesn't end here on the podcast. Our newsletter has so much more. The Hey Denver newsletter is full of recommendations, news tidbits, and local secrets meant to help you live your best Denver life. It's free and lands in your inbox every weekday morning at 6 a.m. From a rundown of the latest city council news to the best recommendations for how to spend your weekend, the Hey Denver newsletter will help you stay connected with the Mile High City. It may even be that push you need to go to that houseplant workshop you've been dying to check out, or that karaoke night, or that food festival. You get the picture. You can subscribe to Hey Denver by texting DENVER to 66866. That's 66866. We have to address this situation at the Chicago style beef and dogs restaurant, which was there was a sign saying no ketchup on your hot dog. Um, how do you feel about ketchup on a hot dog, Pay? 
there was like more than just one sign though too. It was like <laughs> it was like plastered all over the place. Like it is blasphemy to put hot dog on your uh, put hot dog on your ketchup. <laughs> it is blasphemy to put ketchup ketchup on your hot dog there, um, which I didn't realize was such a big thing. Like you will get like kicked out of Chicago if you do that. When we first walked in, Bree, um, you had like mentioned uh, ketchup, ketchup and biker yeah. Jim like whispered to me and Olivia. He's like, you should tell her to ask for ketchup here and see what they say. Um, but he wanted to watch me squirm. Yeah, he get, wanted to watch get the fail. finger pointed at me. But um, I hate ketchup, period. I don't eat ketchup on my burgers or my fries or anything. Whoa. I think it's gross. Um, so that's a good rule. No ketchup mm. on my hot dog. Wow. Well, I have to say, I did not do it. I wanted to, but I wanted to respect the space. Why don't you put ketchup on a hot dog? Because they're ridiculous. Uh, that's not America. America, you get to do whatever you want, right? Yeah. So Chicago, feels very controlling. They they look. It's so controlling. They look at putting ketchup, sweet tomato stuff, as what kids would do. Oh, you and know? that neon I mean, relish wasn't a. <laughs> Our next stop was Mustard's Last Stand. I guess maybe now might be time to do a chili cheese dog. Hey, what was it like? Like, what was the place like and what did we order? So it was a pretty small little spot. I had heard of Mustard's Last Stand. I think anyone talking hot dogs talks about Mustard's. I had never been, though, Um, because they have a location in Boulder and they have a location in Denver. Are those their only two? Do you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, it was very small. It was kind of like a glorified hot dog cart to be honest like it's really really tiny um which i think is charming but the patio is gorgeous so we sat on the patio and it's got these like giant shaded trees and these nice big picnic tables and it was a it was a lovely day so we sat outside so the the ambiance and the vibes there were real chill yeah totally i the patio is un unbeatable especially it's right on university which is a very busy street and you almost don't notice it's there that's how good of a patio it is i was recently on a hike and there was a couple in front of me um and they were hiking and i heard them chatting and they were like oh let's get lunch after this and one of them said let's go get hot dogs and so they said some hot dog place and then the other one was like well no let's go to mustard's last stand and then they hiked away and I took a break. And then when I caught up with them again, they were fighting. And then I just had to follow them. We, we've got to talk about our order. What was the general consensus of our order? Uh, our general consensus was that we made a mistake. Yes. <laughs> Which, so maybe uh, it wasn't Mustard's yes. fault. We ordered the wrong thing. Totally. I mean, because Mustard's thing, I guess, is the Chicago style dog. But we had just done the Chicago style dog at the place where you're supposed to get Chicago style dogs. So we decided we would change it up and we thought, hey, you know what is another popular dog is the chili cheese dog. Um, that's where, where Jim and I were both leaning. So we, we I think, all went ahead and got um, chili cheese dogs. And uh, their take on a chili cheese dog was um, unique. Oh, just now? Yeah. We ate a chili cheese dog at Mustard's Last Stand, but it was very... <sighs> It was more chili than the dog, and it really took over the bun, and then Jim's dog fell out of the bun completely. I I think we got the wrong thing, I think is what we decided. We should have got a Chicago dog. Yeah, it's just we're not necessarily on a Chicago dog eating junket everywhere that we go. And truthfully, I think where we were at before, probably... uh, There's another uh, place called uh, Vienna Beef in Denver. They also do a real classic, really good uh, Chicago-style dog. You know, so uh, we wanted to try something different here. And yeah, mine squeezed out like a like a overripe <laughs> banana. Uh, and Jesus. I mean, I, I don't feel good about saying this particularly, but it was very pedestrian. So next we stopped off at the Dog House, H-A-U-S, uh, which is a chain out of California to try one more dog. And Jim knew a lot about this place, but he hadn't really eaten here much. They got some stuff here. Um, I don't eat here a ton. You might not know this, but I eat a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, Jim's. you know, and, and at your own hot dog I, restaurant, uh, at my own hot dog place. So, you know, quite often hot dogs aren't the first thing I go for when I, I travel. It. I, I do for it. sure. Every time I go out of town, to like try absolutely. The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Regional fair. Indeed, indeed. So, but looking through here, I mean, they look really good. Hey, what did we decide to order here? 
So they kind of do a build your own hot dog style. It felt very like uh, hot dogs of the future <laughs> to me. It was like real hip and cool compared to the other places we'd went that were kind of like charming hot dog stand vibes. This was like, hey, we're super cool and we play cool music and whatever. Um, so it was a build your own style situation. I went ahead and got um, just an all beef dog with some caramelized onions. But the big thing here was doing um, they their buns are made of Hawaiian rolls. Yeah, they take a row of three and they slice them down the middle and then put the hot dog in there. And so, it, you know, you when you grill a Hawaiian roll, it's like kind of this like sweet. It becomes like sweet and crunchy. And in theory, that's uh, that sounds delicious. I think you got something bacon wrapped brie, and I don't remember what biker Jim got. I, don't, I think he got like a dog with sauerkraut. It was kind of like kind of standard. We all kept it pretty standard here. Um, but what honestly, the highlight of this stop in particular was we were sitting in the air conditioned space hanging out and I asked Biker Jim about meeting Anthony Bourdain. Um, one more thing before we go to our next stop. I know Anthony Bourdain notoriously said you were the only place worth eating at in Denver. You might be paraphrasing a little bit. <laughs> Something along those lines. I'll take it. Mm. What did you think about that? I mean, I this is coming. This is, I have a deep respect for Anthony Bourdain. I was so bummed to hear he had a bad time here. Um, well, uh, so I have a story. Yes. I'll, I'll just throw this out real quick. Okay. Um, so when he came to Denver, you know, um, every you know everybody's talking about because he does a, a show, you know, right. a speaking engagement Ugh. along with shooting for no reservations or parts unknown or whatever. Um, and at this time, he was doing no reservations. And people knew he was coming to Denver, so there's a big conversation in the westward, in it, you know, in the, uh, uh, the daily news, you know. Sure, it's like, it's where should he deal. go? Where should he go? And yeah. everybody's picking these places here. And I'm reading that article when I got a phone call from the producer for Bourdain's show, you know. And she said, you know, Anthony, you know, or Tony's heard of you and he wants to... You know, come Try check her. out your stand. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yes, please. You know, and she begs me not to tell anybody that he's coming. Okay. You know, so I only told a few people, right? So we're, we're shooting for the show. And I realized why she asked for me to tell nobody. Very recognizable cat. You know. Absolutely. We shot for about two hours before he got there. You know, just doing B-roll and stuff sure. with the crew. He comes walking up and, you know, within 10 minutes... There's like 50 people standing around, right? You know, and the thing is, he was so generous that he got that if it wasn't for fans like you and me, he'd be standing next to a deep fryer. Yeah, I agree. I, super I, generous. I always got that from yeah, him. Yeah, super generous. I mean, very, he's exactly, he he's just the same audience. guy that you expect, Yeah. you know, oh, from his TV know. show. You know, so anybody wanted something signed, he'd stop what he was doing and sign it. He, he'd take a oh. picture with anybody. I mean, it was just that kind of kindness yeah so that night i went to the speaking engagement you know i had tickets for it i had tickets before i knew i was going to be on the show right and hickenlooper was mayor at the time and presents him with a fork to the city <laughs> you know and and he comes out and he starts talking about how denver was such a culinary wasteland the time that he was that's there before it. and this was like 2002 that's right that's he called what he it said. a great place for chicken wings and fried fucking mozzarella sticks were his exact words you know so brutal. and he and well you know he wasn't known for not being rude <laughs> yeah you know, he you know he says you know who wants to get their cheesecakes from a factory you know, which is funny because i had a cheesecake business called cheesecake genius <laughs> And my motto was, where would you get a cheesecake? From a genius or a factory? <laughs> and, and, you know, and he says, nobody grills their macaroni. You know, I mean, he just, he, he dissed the culinary scene and said he ended up going back to his hotel room and eating a can of Pringles. And then he goes, oh. but I have been to the mountaintop. And the crowd <laughs> looks around. He goes, and I have been enlightened. And the crowd's going, yeah. And he unbuttons his jacket, and he's wearing the Biker Gym T-shirt I gave him that day. And he goes, Biker Gym's gourmet dogs. You guys have something here that nobody else has anywhere. So we did not plan to end up at Biker Gym's gourmet dogs, but Biker Gym like practically demanded a chance to show us how hot dogs should be. And... 
like we had stated from the beginning, we were Biker Gym's fans, but we actually got sort of like the Biker Gym expertise tour of the menu. What what did Biker Jim and his folks serve us, Pay? He gave us like a little bit of everything. So the setup, if you've never been to Biker Jim's, is you pick a, a type of hot dog. So he's got a bunch on there. He's kind of known for like having these really unique meats. So you can get an ostrich one, um, a, a jackrabbit antel- antelope one. You can get rattlesnake. You can get elk. So he's got all of these different style of dogs. So you pick a dog and then you pick... a a topping combo. So he has a menu full of topping combos. Um, And the classic one is um, cream cheese with caramelized onions. That's like the biker gym signature. So he he kind of went ahead and made a bunch for us and then sliced them up in halves and let us try a little bit of everything. It was awesome. It was it was kind of like, okay, we weren't going to go here because we know biker gyms hot dogs are good. But when you get the biker gyms like specialty of like him picking from the menu for you i gotta say it it endeared me even more and now i have a new favorite i know me too (laughs) my i'll tell you my original was like kind of the biker gym's like baseline recommendation which is the jalapeno cheddar elk dog topped with his signature toppings which is the cream cheese and caramelized onions it's delicious it's my standby but he introduced us to the um jackalope conspiracy so that's the jackrabbit antelope hot dog topped with the conspiracy topping combo which is blue cheese french fried onions and um garlic aioli and it was so freaking good. It's definitely my new favorite. So after this day of dogs with Denver's Hot Dog Royalty, we got a better understanding, I think, of the vast landscape of toppings and buns and flavors that hot dogs can offer. Um, Pay, what did you learn on this trip to Biker Gyms? Okay, I've got a couple takeaways. The first is that this was the best day of my summer so far. Dude. It was incredible. <laughs> uh, my other takeaway... Uh, the hot dog landscape is vast. Yes. I had no idea. As someone who's like, uh, besides Spiker Gyms, my exposure to hot dogs is like baseball games. Um, yeah. I didn't know there was so much that went in to hot dogs until Biker Jim dropped his hot hot dog knowledge on us. <laughs> um, so there's, I think there's still a lot to explore. And even Jim said that. Yeah. There's a lot of other stuff out there. I mean, I still want to try Billy's. I still want to try Steve's. I want to try, um, you know, there's there's other stuff out there. Harley's. Um, we tried to go to Harley's yes, and they Harley's weren't open. Harley's was closed. That was one of Biker Jim's biggest recommendations. So anyways, I do want to go out and do this again. Um, but in my uh, an anticlimactic overall takeaway, uh, Biker Jim's rocks. I know. I mean, I went into this pretty open-minded, but like, honestly, we're going to end this episode with like, go to Biker Gyms. It's awesome. (laughs) And if you see him and his luxurious silver hair, say hi. Just talk to him. Yeah, say hi. Tell him him you heard him on CityCast Denver. And here's what else Denverites are talking about. Some good news for kids. Chalkbeat reports that anyone 19 or younger will be able to ride public transit for free starting on September 1st. Or should I say continue to ride free? Since everyone can ride free through August thanks to RTD's zero fare for better air promotion. The change comes as RTD is conducting a deeper study on fare pricing and equity, and Denver schools have been forced to cut bus service for certain middle and elementary schools. Offering free fares to kids for a year will reportedly cost RTD around $4 million, and they've already talked about finding funding to extend the pilot in perpetuity. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell the driver of the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile about us? Rate the show five stars wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, by texting Denver to 66866. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye-bye. I guess maybe now might be time to do a chili cheese dog.